OK, so in this problem, we've got one end of a light inextensible string is attached to a block of mass 1.8 kilos. The other end of the string is attached to an object of mass 1.4 kilos. So we've got a block, 1.8 kilos, object, 1.4 kilos. So a block and an object. The block is held at rest in contact with a rough plane inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal. So this is the block, OK, uh, held in rest at a, on a plane 20 degrees to the horizontal. So this is the one that's got the mass of 1.8 kilos. So let's put the weight in now, so 1.8 g. So if we put, divide it into its component parts, we're going to have 1.8 g sine, so that's 20 degrees, isn't it? So sine of 20 degrees and 1.8 g cosine of 20 degrees. OK. Um, now, that surface is rough uh, and there's a constant frictional force of 5 newtons acts on the block. So we've got 5 newtons working against the direction of motion. The string is taut and passes over a smooth pulley at the bottom edge of the plane. The object is in contact with a smooth plane, so there's no friction on this plane, inclined at 80 degrees to the horizontal. Right, this is the one that's got the 1.4 uh, kilos. OK, so it's got its weight working directly downwards, 1.4 g. Divide that into its component parts. So we've got 1.4 g sine of 80 degrees and 1.4 g cosine 80 degrees. OK. Uh, there'll be tension in the string. OK, like so. Um, the block is released and the object moves down the slope with acceleration a metres per second per second. OK, so that's our directions. Um, Given that the object is initially 2 metres from the floor and the block is 2.5 metres from the pulley, so this distance here is 2 metres, whereas this distance here is 2.5 metres. Okay. Uh, find the speed of the object when it reaches the floor and find the speed of the block when it reaches the pulley. OK, so this is the complicated looking picture that we've got. OK, so our job here is to work out the acceleration of the particles. Now, the tension isn't going to really bother us, OK? Um, we're not really required to find that. We, uh, there could be a question, if this was an exam question, it could include find the acceleration of tension of the, block, of the uh, system, but we're not asked to find the tension. So we'll just focus in on the acceleration here. So... Let's call this particle A and that particle B, OK? So I'm going to resolve particle A parallel to the plane in the direction of motion. So what have we got? We've got the tension working directly down, well, working down the slope. We've got the weight working down the slope, the 1.8 g sine 20. And I've got the frictional force, 5 newtons, working against me. And that's got to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, let's look at particle B. So I'm going to resolve that down the slope. OK? So I've got the weight working downwards, the 1.4 g sine 80. I've got the tension working against me. And that's got to be equal to the mass times acceleration. OK, so there's no frictional force there because that surface there, that plane is smooth, whereas that one is rough. OK, so here's equation one and here's equation two. So if I add those two equations together, then the t's will cancel. So one plus two. And I'll be left with the 1.8 g sine 20, take away five plus the 1.4 g sine 80 is equal to, well, 1.8 plus 1.4 will get me to 3.2 a. 
Okay, so that's my equation. So I can now work out what the acceleration is. So I've got the 1.8, I'm going to take g as 9.8 times sine of 20, take away the 5, plus the 1.4 lots of 9.8 times sine of 80. And so the acceleration, uh, sorry, that's 14.544, then divide that by 3.2. Almost forgot to do that. And that gets me 4.545249, etc., which is 4.5 meters per second per second to 2 sig fig. Okay, so that's the acceleration of the system. Now, if I had been asked to find the tension, I could just substitute that into one of the two previous equations to work out t. That's fine. So, that's what I needed. So acceleration, 4.5452491281. Okay, I'm just going to keep that there for calculator space because I may need to come back to it. Okay, so that's the first job done. Right, so now it's going to turn into a SUVAT problem, as you may well have guessed. So... S U V A T. Now, the speed of the object when it reaches the floor. Okay, so it needs that object B needs to travel two meters. Its initial velocity was zero because it's released from rest. Okay, V is what I want to know, and the acceleration is the four point five four five etc. Okay. So, if I want the v, and I want something that doesn't have time, it's the fifth equation there. So, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 lots of a times s. Okay, so times 2 times 2 uh, is 18.18, and then you want to square root both sides. And we get 4.2639. So that's 4.3 meters per second to, uh, uh, sorry, to sig fig. Okay, so now at the point that B hits the ground, okay, A is also traveling at that speed, okay? However, when B hits the ground, there is no tension in the string anymore. Uh, so that means that A is just going to be traveling under its own weight. So that means that we need to also, we need to consider at that point, there's going to be a different acceleration. It's going to be accelerating uh, at a different rate. So the second set of SUVAT that we need to pull off here for part B is that particle A is now travelling at 4.2639, etc., metres per second. It needs to travel a further half a metre. We don't know the final velocity, that's what we want to find out. We don't know A, we need that value in order to solve this problem. So, if you just look at particle A, and there's now no tension in the string, okay? Then that means that if I resolve A down the slope, then without that tension, the only thing that's pulling it down is its own weight, which is the 1.8 g sine 20. Okay? I've just realised that before I continue, I best write that down because I know I'm going to need that. Right, so I'll write that full calculator display there just to make sure my final answer is as accurate as possible. So I've got the weight working downwards. I've got the five newtons working against me. Okay, and that's got to be equal to the mass times acceleration. So that allows me to work out A. So we've got 1.8 times 9.8 times sine of 20 take away the 5, divide that by 1.8, 
and I get 0 0.57401962682. So 0 0.57 meters per second to two per second per second to two sig fig. So that is the acceleration I'm using. Okay? So now v squared is equal to u squared um, plus 2 AS, so plus 2 lots of 0 0.574 times 0 0.5. Okay, so I've got the 0 0.574 still in my calculator. I'll times that by 0 0.5 and times that by 2, which gets me the same thing, obviously. Right, now I've got to add on this squared. So 4.26391804. Three nine one eight zero four nine. That's why I wrote down a full calculator display for this very, very purpose. Square that, and I get eighteen point seven five five, etc. So square root that answer, and I get four point three three zero seven. So four point three meters per second to two sig fig. Okay, so in actuality, okay, what I found is that, well, um, I am traveling slightly faster. Okay, um, so particle A is traveling slightly faster than it was. It has sped up, uh, but because the acceleration was so slow, right, it hasn't really sped up by that much over that half a meter, okay? Because remember, it's only going point, it's only uh, increasing in speed by 0.57 um, every second, okay? Uh, increasing 0.57 meters per second every second. So that's why you get that kind of limited amount. Um, so that is how we can solve this problem. It looks very complicated, okay? But once you've broken it down into looking horizontally and perpendicular to the plane, it really doesn't include much new stuff there. It's really applying all the techniques that we've learned so far, but just uh, resolving it perpendicular parallel to the plane, which aids you and quickens up the problem. Okay, So it is really worth your while practicing these. Um, next section we go on to is differential equations, uh, but then the section after that we go into coefficient of friction, and where there will be more problems like this, but with the coefficient of friction playing a part.